Now let's talk about, let's say, how the, the T cells are going to get activated, right? And how the T cells will respond or to fight for infection. Let's talk about that. Let's say if there's a pathogen comes here, right? Let's say this is a pathogen comes in right here. And you guys remember from the innate immune system, what do you, they have? They have something called PAMP, right? P-A-M-P. Pattern Associated Molecular Pattern. And these, like antigen presenting cells, all right, they will, let's say there's a dendritic cell, they'll recognize this macrophages, right? They'll recognize this, this, and this, let's say microbe. And this is called pattern recognition receptors, right? It could be tau like receptor 4, 1, 2, 3, right? All of them. So once this recognized by this pattern recognition receptor, that is going to re re result into signal transduction, right? This is where there's going to activations in nuclear factor, kappa B and all, right? Transcription factors result into secretions of the pro-inflammatory pro cytokines. That is going to happen one thing, right? And other thing is that, like what are those pro-inflammatory cytokines? Okay, remember? Interleukin 1, interleukin number 6, tumor necrosing factor, alpha, all of them, right? You cannot forget this. This is a very, very important one. And, and remember, when these guys are, okay, and then what is going to happen? They will, because they look, look at this. This is a macrophage, right? Macro means big, right? Big eater. So when they take this, what is going to happen is that, they will they will do a process of like you know they result into something called like you know there is okay they'll result they'll okay they'll take inside here right and then what it will do they'll put it in a vesicle like endosomes and they'll break down into pieces okay because endosome there's endosome right here let's just say this is a endosome and like now here okay we'll make a different color let's say this chicken pieces are here okay this guy will take okay we'll make it green they'll they'll this phagocytosis now now this bacteria is here okay now this bacteria is here when this bacteria is here what is going to happen is that there is something called endosome right sorry this is endosome right lysosome lysosome will fuse here and release hydrolytic enzymes and break this this microbe into let's say pieces all right so now you have a bunch of pieces of this like this this is what is going to happen all right and then then after what is going to happen here is after this, this will, this will, okay, go and fuse with this protein right here. What is this? This is, if this is endosome, we call them a MHC2. Now, this is the word. I have to talk about something here. I'm going to discuss about how this MHC1 and MHC2 are synthesized, all right? Remember. Whenever we talk about synthesis of MSC1 and MSC2, there are a couple of concepts I, I, I want you guys to remember. One is called, okay, co-dominant, all right? And other one is called polymorphogenesis. Let's just talk about this, all right? The importance here is that whenever you get the MSC complex, right? The, what are these? It's a peptide, the proteins, all right? And you get the alleles or gene from your mother and father. That's what you that's why that's what you get. And this is the reason why the MHC1 and MHC are varies from all of us. There's a genetic variation between me and you whenever we come MHC1 and MHC2, right? And the whenever there is a in a chromosomes, okay, what is gonna happen? There is at a at a specific area at, at the loci, the different allele are present, right? to synthesize your MHC1 and MHC2. And you're, get, you're getting from both your parents and parents, parents. So yeah, we're all gonna have different. But there's also con con the concept of the polymorphogenesis or polymorphogene, which means that we there's a numbers of different alleles are present. That's reason why we make a different MHC1 and MHC2, all right? That is why sometimes, you know, Sometimes, whenever the virus is infected us, you know, some of us will able to respond to that. Our MHC1 can recognize or re and respond to that. And sometimes, 
we were not able to recognize that, okay? That's why there's the genetic variations. You often know, like, you know, sometimes, like, you know, if a virus is, infects you, then some people don't even get sick and some people do, right? What is the importance of that, right? This is what, and this is completely, this is, com this is, has to do with the, your MSC1 and MSC2, right? It is really, really important concept here because what is the importance of MHC1 and MHC2 is that these MHC1 and MHC2, they will present antigen to our T cells and T cells will what? Will do our immune response, okay? If, let's say, somehow there's a defect on MHC1 or 2, that means these guys would not able to present the antigen to the immune cells. If their antigens are not present to the immune cells, what is going to happen? We're going to get very, very sick, right? So that is not why the importance of the MHC1 and MHC2 or human leukocyte antigen, another name is human leukocyte antigen, are very, very important, all right? Now, the, the importance here is that whenever we synthesize, okay, they usually synthesize, we call them out, all right? It looks something like this, okay? It could be this, all right? This is a one chain right here. This is a alpha chain right here, and they do have a beta to globulin too. But just remember this, and it has the other one which is called let's just say this portion right here, okay? And look something like this. And this is could be maybe alpha. Let's write them. This is alpha two. Here's a sense of alpha one, alpha two. All right. If there's a sense of alpha and alpha two, what is going to happen? This is usually synthesized. All right. Usually since I since the MHC one, and if it's let's say, okay, if this is another one here, all right, and then if it's let's say, I'll make this as a okay, we'll just do this, all right, and this is again alpha one, but this is a beta one, okay. Look, if if there is a chain, right, the sequence of the amino acids, if there's synthesis alpha one chains and there's synthesis alpha two chains, then usually they make the MHC one complex, okay? Or H L A A or this H A B C. And then this one is going to be MHC two. Alright? Because they are going to synthesize by alpha one and beta one chains, all right? And what is the importance here is that, you see this one right, this area right here? This is the area, all right? This is the area right here. This is a group area. This is what, you know, where the antigen can fit into it, okay? This is what is antigen can fit into it. And usually the antigens that's gonna, that's gonna fit here, these ones are what, these are peptide, okay? And even the MHC1, they can able to hold from like eight to 10, amino acids and this if the MHC2 they were able to hold like 13 to 20 amino acids of the peptide okay remember your T cell does not rec recognize the bigger protein than this right doesn't it? and they would only recognize if they if if any antigens are are in our antigens are presented by the antigen presenting cells through this MHC1 or MHC2, okay? And remember, as we talked from the selection process, if the antigens are presented in the MHC1, then who is gonna respond? Sort of toxic CH cells, right? We also call them a tumor cells, okay? Because they respond to the tumor cells, right? The cancers. And then these guys, MHC21, who is gonna able to hold like 13 to 20 amino acids, they'll respond to, look, this one, which is your Helper cells, CD4 cells, all right? CD4 positive cells will respond to MSC2. Now, now how do we know? How do this dendritic antigen presenting cells know that, you know, this antigen will go either on MSC1 and MSC2? That is also a very simple concept, and I'll explain that. But before I'll go there, you know, you see this group right here? Like, look this. You know, sometimes, because of genetic variations, okay, we all are very different from one another, right? Because what is going to happen, sometimes this could be like maybe smaller than it's supposed to be. Like it's smaller than a normal, right? Or maybe sometimes it's larger than smaller, okay? There is a genetic variations of it. In that case, somehow what is going to happen here is that if, if this measure, this, this 
major histocompatibility. This complex is not able to hold the antigens, all right, or the defects in this this complex, and they were not able to show that to hey guys, hey T cells, and you help. That what is going to happen is T cells is not going to respond to that. If that happens, then what is going to happen here is that you know will be very very sick. Okay, that is result into severe immunocompromised disease. All right, because T cells are there to protect us. All right, and they only recognize again, they only recognize if the antis are present in there, and they only recognize the peptide. They don't recognize the carbohydrates and lipids. For the carbohydrates and lipids, that's where the B cell comes in. And we'll talk about that too when we talk about the B cell lecture, all right? Now, now after this major histocompatibility, what we have to talk about is how this is different on the major histocompatibility, how the cells know where antigen to present. But again, before we go there, let me tell you one more thing here. You know, because of the, this major histocompatibility, all right? This is why oftentimes this transplant is not successful. Is because what is going to happen here is that what is going to happen here is that look, whenever there is okay, because whenever because what is going to happen here is that during this problem what is going to happen is happen is that these guys will show their own protein right peptide because major histocompatibility will show that antigens right, and what is going to happen here is that the T cells when they see it. What is going to happen here is that T cell does not recognize that that transplant, let's say liver cells, because it does not belong to. It wasn't trained in early phase here. Okay, so it will it will think it is a foreign. Okay, and cell it cell T cell does not have a brain. What is going to happen is that it will it will reject it. It will kill the it will kill the that liver cells. All right. If there's a liver transplant, that's the reason why a lot of times whenever we talk about immunosuppression drugs or immunomodulator drugs, we're actually targeting up the T cells. We're trying to slow down the T cell process because, because what is going to happen here? If you show antigen to a peptide through this MSC1, MSC2, and then if T cell, you know, even though you know the liver cell that was transplanted, all right, it is, it will. It will think that it is, does not belong to us. It will. It is a foreign one, and it will reject it. Right. So that's something that you have to remember too. All right. Now, after this, let's talk about this. Now, let's say this. This pathogens, okay, this bacteria, whatever it is, it come here and it recognized by this antigen presenting cell. Remember, whenever we talk about the antigen presenting cell, we always talk about three main ones: dendritic cells, macrophages, and then. Obviously, B cell. These are the three professional antigen present in cell. But remember, there are other one too, like you know, there are, there are so many others, like all the sentinel cells, like you know, uh, neutrophils. These are also like you know, they also role, they also play a role as antigen present cells. But the three main ones are this one, okay? Again, macrophages, dendritic cells, and then B cells. All right. Now, when let's say this macrophages they gobble up, right? They gobble up this pathogens with this recognition chapter. And what is going to happen here is that they will take into this, and they will they will make a class encoded, and this is what this is called endosomes, right? And lysosome will fuse together and release hydrolytic enzymes, and it will break down into pieces, okay? And break down into pieces. That's what's going to happen, right? Now, one more thing that I have to talk about here, guys, is that let's say sometimes this during this process. If this protein is a breakdown protein, they will go split over in cytoplasm or cytosol. This pack, they will go split over in cytosol. If they go split over in cytosol, what is going to happen in this time? What is also taking place here is that okay, synthesis of like MHC one and MHC two that take place in what synthesis of this complex because these are protein, they take place what in endoplasmic reticulums. Correct. Now, during the process, what is going to happen here is that. This MHC1, let's say if it's, if it's like it's all the split over here in the cytosol, all right? If it is it's in the cytosol, what is going to happen here is that look, there's MHC1 here and MHC2 here, okay? What is going to happen here is that this MHC1, okay, from the from obviously from your endoplasmic reticulums, and it's obviously going to go to Golgi2, right? There is a protein. 
these cytosols right here, right? This 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 breakdown protein which are which are in cytosol, you know, they'll get tagged by something called ubiquitin. Okay? Ubiquitin protein, it'll get tagged. When it gets ubiquitin by this protein, that's a UB right here, okay. What is going to happen? This ubiquitin protein, all right, let me just draw right here, okay? This, okay, this make, okay, this, I'm just making this as a, this breakdown proteins, and let's say this is a ubiquitin, okay? Ubiquitin protein. When it gets tagged down here, what is going to happen? The proteosome, let's just say this is a, okay, this is a proteosome right here, okay? The proteosome is going to recognize that, okay? Whenever there's a tag of ubiquitin on this protein, this proteasome is going to react that because remember, the you know, cytoplasm doesn't really have a protein there. And the, in here, what is going to happen is there is a, there's a process of breakdown happens, all right? That's a process of even further breakdowns happens, let's say, because breaking down the proteins and all that can happen, right? And in that case, this, this is also, this will now get what is going to happen. They will get transferred into, okay, let's just say, endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum. And what is transporting this? Once it's breakdown from the proteasomes, okay, because pro proteasomes do a degrading of those proteins, right? And when that happens, this there's a protein called TAB. Very, very important proteins. Look, what is this protein called? Transfer antigen peptide. These pro basically is transferring this antigen, this peptide, into the endoplasmic reticulum, right? This is what's happening. And during the time, what is going to happen here is that the, they will get loaded with the MHC1, okay? And then from there, it will go to the Golgi, okay? So let's say Golgi, and then, okay, this is a cell, the cell membrane right here, and it also, let's just say, this MHC1, and let's say this is my antigen right here. This is how, this is how, you know, they can get loaded in the MHC1. They have to be. This, if you want to be good, get loaded in MHC1, the virus, but usually virus, they what? They replicate inside the cells, right? They're always looking at the cell, and they make a lot of this, a lot of the antiviral replications happen. They make antiviral proteins too. That's what they make, right? And that's what they do. And during that process, or, or microbes, anything that is located in the, let's say, in the cytoplasm, you know, they result into this process, this pathway where the ubiquitin get tagged, right? And then there's a tab proteins and there's a transfer of this, uh, this uh, proteins in this endoplasmic reticulums. And ultimate result is that the MHC1 will pick up and then it will show uh, to the surface of the cells. Okay, this is how MHC1 works, all right? It needs to work in there. It, it, it needs to pick up antigen from the cytosols, okay? And this process, we call them endogenous pathway, okay? This is what is called the endogenous pathway.